Terence Howard stands poised to reveal an enigma 6,000 years old, a puzzle that humanity has been striving to solve for millennia. Prepare for a revelation that's not only startling, but transformative. Let's embark on this exploration together. Howard enlightens us about a millennia-old secret, a mystery spanning 6,000 years, the enigma of the flower of life. Ever come across it? It's one of humanity's oldest symbols, discovered in Egypt's Osiris Temple, mysteriously etched into its walls, dating back 6,000 years. The same emblem appears in China's forbidden temples, guarded by foo dogs. The flower of life symbolizes universal control. Those who mastered it held the cosmos in their grasp. Legends like Da Vinci and Newton spent lifetimes unraveling its secrets, secrets also pursued by Pythagoras. Yet these luminaries were hindered by their two-dimensional vision, unable to transcend this flat perspective, thus remaining trapped in this linear realm. They endeavored to animate this flower, to discover its hidden secrets, including geometric shapes and the mysterious McBay. But their quest was derailed by a fallacy, the belief in straight lines. Do you believe in straight lines in the universe? Consider this. All energy in the universe manifests through motion. Kinetic energy implies motion. Galaxies swirl. Not in straight lines, but in vortices. All forming waves, all curved. Show me a natural straight line. Where do platonic solids originate in a universe devoid of straight lines? We've erred by fixating on linear perspectives, overlooking nature's inherent curvature. Now, back to nature's curves. Howard's insights reveal an information system. Consider the space between these points. If this represents Earth and this the moon, what fills the void? Howard discovered that this void contains fundamental particles, aligning perfectly with his findings from the flower of life. Particles also sought in CERN's collider experiments. Terence Howard's entrancing talk on the flower of life not only immerses us in ancient enigmas, but also invites us to reconsider our geometric perceptions. His insights, far from mere conjecture, resonate within a rich tapestry of historical, scientific, and philosophical contexts. As we delve into the 6,000-year secret of the flower of life, we embark on a journey interweaving the pursuits of intellects like da Vinci, Newton, and Pythagoras with contemporary geometric rethinking. The flower of life, an elaborate design of interlocking circles, transcends its visual allure. It's a gateway into ancient cosmic understanding, found in Egypt's Osiris Temple and beneath China's vigilant foo dogs, symbolizing a universal veneration. This emblem, believed to encapsulate fundamental space-time forms, represents the interconnectivity threading through all life, hinting at the cosmos' intrinsic unity. Terence Howard's admiration for this symbol isn't unique. History records other great minds captivated by its significance. Leonardo da Vinci, a Renaissance polymath, was spellbound by its geometric perfection, seeing it as a key to unlocking universal mysteries. Isaac Newton, exploring gravitational forces and cosmic mechanics, also delved into ancient symbols like the flower of life, possibly linking his gravity breakthrough to this cosmic enigma. Greek mathematician Pythagoras explored these mystical dimensions, using geometry to decode musical harmonies and cosmic structures. Howard astutely points out these geniuses' limitations, their confinement to two-dimensional thinking. Despite their brilliance, they struggled with the symbol's depth, unable to fully transcend its planar limits. Here, Howard critiques traditional Euclidean geometry, heralding a new paradigm. Euclidean geometry, foundational to much mathematical and scientific understanding, concentrates on flat, two-dimensional planes. Yet, as Howard eloquently argues, the universe isn't restricted to flatness. It's a symphony of curves, waves, and multi-dimensional forms. The flower of life thus becomes a portal to understanding nature's curvature. Observing galaxies' spirals or a nautilus shell's patterns reveals not straight lines, but curves. This insight is significant, suggesting the universe operates not just in flat and linear realms, but in dimensions our ancestors might have tried communicating through symbols like the flower of life. Howard's speech aligns with modern scientific conceptions of the universe. The curved space-time concept in Einstein's relativity theory reflects this ancient wisdom. The curvature around massive celestial bodies, evident in gravitational lensing, proves the universe's curved nature. Howard's insights also resonate with quantum physics, the elusive nature of elementary particles, existing in probabilities rather than fixed positions, aligns with a universe beyond straight lines and predictable paths, this is where Howard's notion of discovering something in the void becomes intriguing. The void, often perceived as empty, might teem with fundamental particles, invisible yet weaving the universe's fabric. The flower of life, then, is not just an ancient symbol, but a depiction of the universe's deepest secrets. The 6,000-year-old secret transcends a mere geometric pattern, 
symbolizing reality's essence. It bridges millennia, connecting ancient wisdom with modern scientific insights. Howard's 45-year quest reveals a shift from conventional models, black holes and dark matter, to an electric universe conception. Da Vinci's extensive work on the flower of life, primarily linear, failed to unveil its secrets as the universe is inherently curved. Abandoning straight-line notions, Howard embraced curved space, the truest path between two points. Electricity and magnetism, as they traverse space, exhibit distinct directional spins. Northeast for electricity, southwest for magnetism. This insight allowed Howard to perceive the in-between spaces, the petals humanity has overlooked, the elements filling the cosmic vacuum, evidence of wave-particle duality. Building on Howard's profound insights, we embark on a quest to decode the universe's hidden language, not in straight lines, but in dynamic, ceaseless movement. This exploration aligns with modern physics, where energy and motion are understood not as linear paths, but as a complex interplay of forces and fields. At its core, this principle dictates that all energy in the universe is in perpetual motion, manifesting in vortices, waves, and spirals. Modern physics corroborates this view with its study of galaxies and celestial bodies, arranging themselves in swirling spirals and elliptical orbits, mirrored in DNA helices and hurricane arms. Howard's view suggests a universal pattern of curved cyclic motion and energy. Quantum mechanics wave-particle duality, positing particles as both distinct entities and probabilistic waves, exemplifies this departure from linear thought. This duality challenges our conventional motion and trajectory understanding, proposing that the universe expresses itself in patterns and probabilities that defy straightforward categorization. Moving from macrocosmic to microcosmic, we explore nature's curves to grasp the universe's essence. This section delves into the natural world's embodiment of curved, non-linear geometry as highlighted by Howard. From the grand sweeps of rivers to the tender spirals of a fern frond, nature is rich in curves and spirals, patterns that are far from random but adhere to mathematical concepts like fractal geometry and the Fibonacci sequence. Fractal geometry, with its recursive patterns, provides insight into nature's boundless intricacy. These fractals manifest in tree branching, snowflake structures, and the rugged outlines of mountainous terrains. The Fibonacci sequence, another mathematical model, is seen in the layout of sunflower seeds, the coils of a snail shell, and human body proportions. These designs unveil a concealed symmetry in nature, surpassing the linear constructs of Euclidean geometry. Howard's view of nature lacking straight lines echoes these findings, highlighting nature's curved and repeating motifs. Recognizing these patterns in the natural world enlightens us about the universe's fundamental nature. These configurations are not mere chance, but mirror deeper cosmic principles that shape everything in the cosmos. Our deeper exploration prepares us to confront ideas that challenge traditional mathematical and physical understandings. Terence Howard, in his insightful discourse, introduces us to the concept of mathematical loops. This intriguing notion, exemplified by the recursive nature of the square root of two, presents a paradoxical aspect of mathematical processes. Howard urges us to reconsider our reliance on two-dimensional Euclidean frameworks and proposes a new approach. He challenges us to examine loops in mathematics, using the square root of two as an example. By cubing and dividing the value continuously, we consistently arrive at a specific number, defying traditional mathematical expectations of change or progression. This loop is not just a numerical anomaly, but might represent a fundamental, yet unexplored aspect of mathematical truth, overlooked or misunderstood in conventional Euclidean math. Howard's probe into these loops suggests that our grasp of mathematics and its ties to the physical world might be limited or flawed. He proposes that as our buildings and aircraft have evolved to become more aerodynamic, leaving behind two-dimensional designs, our mathematics should also progress. This evolution would involve embracing concepts that appear illogical, such as these mathematical loops, and incorporating them into our understanding of the cosmos. Howard's appeal to reevaluate the platonic solids and their role in deciphering the universe is vital. The platonic solids, tetrahedron, cube, octahedron, dodecahedron, and icosahedron, have been central to classical geometry symbolizing elements like fire, earth, air, water, and the cosmos. However, Howard suggests there might be more to these forms, especially when seen through the lens of wave conjugations and mathematical loops. This perspective aligns with the emerging field of quantum geometry, where traditional Euclidean principles give way to a more complex understanding of shapes and structures at the quantum level. In this domain, 
The behavior of particles and forces cannot be fully explained by linear lines and flat planes. They exhibit behaviors better understood through concepts like Howard's mathematical loops, where values loop back in ways that defy traditional comprehension. Howard's challenge to the mathematical world is not just a query of numbers. It's a philosophical and scientific proposition. It calls for a reassessment of fundamental principles, guiding our understanding of reality. By questioning the validity of current mathematical models, Howard advocates for a paradigm shift, potentially leading to a more profound and comprehension of the universe. Terence Howard's speech serves as a catalyst for a broader conversation on the nature of reality, mathematics, and our perception of the cosmos. His insights into mathematical loops and the square root of two open doors to exploring the universe beyond traditional limits. They invite us to ponder a universe much more intricate and interconnected than previously thought. As we continue this exploration, we may discover that answers to the universe's greatest mysteries lie not in the straight lines and flat planes of the past, but in the loops, curves, and multidimensional spaces of a new mathematical paradigm. As we reach the end of our journey through Terence Howard's captivating exploration of the flower of life and its profound implications, we find ourselves standing at the threshold of a new understanding of the universe. Howard's insights challenge us to look beyond the confines of traditional Euclidean geometry, urging us to embrace the intricate curves, spirals, and multidimensional forms that define our cosmos. The flower of life, a symbol etched in the annals of history and hidden within the architecture of the universe, serves as a key to unlocking a deeper, more interconnected understanding of reality. Howard's quest, spanning over four decades, takes us from the ancient walls of Egypt's Osiris Temple to the cutting-edge experiments in modern physics, intertwining the wisdom of the past with the discoveries of the present. He invites us to reconsider the fundamental principles of mathematics, to acknowledge the limitations of our two-dimensional perspectives, and to delve into the complex interplay of forces and fields that shape our universe. His call to reevaluate mathematical concepts like loops and to rethink the role of platonic solids in our understanding of the cosmos isn't just a mathematical challenge. It's a philosophical and scientific revolution. As we close this chapter, let's carry with us the inspiration and curiosity sparked by Howard's speech. The universe is a tapestry woven with intricate patterns and cycles, far beyond the straight lines and flat planes we've long adhered to. Our exploration doesn't end here. It's just the beginning. Each day brings new possibilities to decode the language of the cosmos, to unravel its mysteries, and to embrace a reality far more complex and wondrous than we ever imagined. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey. Remember, the answers to the universe's greatest mysteries may not lie in the straight lines of the past, but in the dynamic loops, curves, and multidimensional spaces of a new mathematical paradigm. Stay curious, keep exploring, and let's continue to push the boundaries of what we believe is possible. Until next time, keep pondering the wonders of the universe and the endless possibilities that lie within it.